This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some important updates to share with you. President Biden made a huge announcement of giving $30 billion over to Ukraine. I'll give you the details of what he said. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are trying to bring down the gas prices. Originally, they said they would give out gas cards, but I'll let you know their new plan now. Joe Manchin talking about switching over parties. Also, President Biden finally mentioned student loan forgiveness for every federal student loan borrower. I'll let you know what he said. Also, one state is going to potentially give out another $200 stimulus check under a new Senate plan. and It'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-based updates, hit the like button down below and I'm giving $200 to my subscribers. I will pick the winners later tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you still have some time to enter. I'll do another video at that time. So if you haven't already, sign up if you want a chance to win a $200 check. Uh, let's get into it. So Biden seeks over $30 billion in Ukraine assistance from Congress. So we've given a few billion. The U.S. has given a few billion so far to Ukraine, but this would be on another level. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Take a look at what President Biden has to say here. In the past two months, Russia launched its brutal attack and has moved weapons and equipment to Ukraine. At, we've, moved, we've moved weapons and equipment and, uh, to Ukraine in record speed. Thanks to the aid we provided, Russian forces have been forced to retreat from Kyiv. Doesn't mean they're not going to try to come back, but they've retreated thus far. We've sent thousands of anti-armor, anti-missiles, helicopters, drones, grenade launchers, machine guns, rifles, radar systems, more than 50 million rounds of ammunition. The United States alone has provided 10 anti-armor systems for every Russian tank that is in Ukraine, 10 to 1. We're providing Ukraine significant, timely intelligence to help them defend themselves against the Russian onslaught. And we're facilitating a significant flow of weapons and systems to Ukraine from our allies and partners around the world, including tanks, artillery, and other weapons. That support is moving with unprecedented speed. Much, much of the new equipment we've announced in the past two, month, two weeks has already gotten to Ukraine, where it can be put to direct use on the battlefield. However, we have almost exhausted what we call the fancy phrase, the drawdown authority that Congress authorized Ukraine, authorized for Ukraine in a bipartisan spending bill last month. Basically, we're out of money. And so that's why today, in order to sustain Ukraine as, a, as it continues to fight, I'm sending Congress a supplemental budget request. It's going to keep weapons and ammunition flowing without interruption to the brave Ukrainian fighters and continue delivering economic and humanitarian assistance to the Ukrainian people. This so-called supplemental funding addresses the needs of the Ukrainian military during the critical weeks and months ahead. And it begins, it begins the transition to longer-term security assistance that's going to help Ukraine deter and continue to defend against Russian aggression. This assistance would provide even more artillery armored vehicles, anti-armored systems, anti-air capabilities that have been used so effectively thus far in the battlefield by the Ukrainian warriors. You know, and it's going to deliver much needed humanitarian assistance as well as food, water, medicine, shelter, and other aid to Ukrainians displaced by Russia's war, and provide aid for those seeking refuge in other countries from Ukraine. <clears throat> it's also going to help schools and hospitals open. It's going to allow pensions and social support to be paid to the Ukrainian people so they have something, something in their pocket. It's also going to provide critical resources to address food shortages around the globe. Ukraine, Ukraine was one of the world's largest agricultural producers. It typically grows 10 percent of all the wheat that's shipped around the world. Putin has asserted sanctions are blocking food from Ukraine and Russia getting on the market, the sanctions we've imposed on Russia simply not true. What are your thoughts on $30 billion going to Ukraine? Should that money be used in the U.S.? Is this a good idea, bad idea? Uh, let me know your thoughts on all that down in the comments below. Do you think Senate or Senate and well, Congress in general, Senate and the House are going to go for this type of thing. Uh, let me know your thoughts on all of that. And next, Pelosi Schumer target oil companies for gas pr 
Gas price spikes. So Democrats want legislation to go after gas price gouging market manipulation. So originally Nancy Pelosi said gas cards. Then she said tax holiday may not be the best idea because then the gas companies may not pass on that savings. Uh, so basically what they're looking at here is instead... The lawmakers said they will give the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, and state attorneys general more power, including civil penalty authority, to go after oil companies and retailers that are gouging their customers in both wholesale and retail sales. So this idea of going after them, I guess it's going to lower the prices because it's targeting the companies to do so, giving the government more power to target these companies and lower the prices. So we're not going to see a gas tax suspension, no gas card rebate cards or gift cards, debit cards, whatever. It uh, looks like this legislation might actually lower the price. So I'll keep you updated on that. They're still talking about that. And Manchin said he'd caucus with the GOP if Thune were Senate leader, according to a book. So this is in the past, but Joe Manchin said that if Republican Senator John Thune was the leader of the Senate, uh, like the head of the Senate, kind of like how, uh, what's his name, Mitch McConnell is, then uh, Joe Manchin would become an independent and then caucus with the Republican Party. So I think we all knew that Joe Manchin is pretty much a Republican at heart uh, because of how he acts and his policy and stance with a lot of different things. So he kind of admitted it in the past, but it's not like he's going to do that now. So that was in the past. And then Bernie Sanders, speaking of Joe Manchin, Bernie Sanders says Democrat strategy for handling Manchin cinema was an absolute political failure. I agree with that. Uh, so what he said here is how you handle Manchin, how you handle cinema, and the other conservative Democrats is one of the challenges that Democrats have got to deal with. Uh, but the current strategy is an absolute political failure. So I don't know what other way that the Democrats could have handled it. Uh, you know, they're kind of stuck with Manchin and cinema. So let me know your thoughts on that. And when it comes to student loan forgiveness, this is huge. It's been uh, President Biden got elected in 2020 running on the promise that he was going to cancel student loans for all federal student loan borrowers, $10,000. Now he finally addressed it, uh, which is shocking. He kind of brushed it off in the past, but I think there's a reason why he's addressing it now, kind of like the ace that he was keeping up his sleeve. So Biden administration signals a decision on a student loan forgiveness could come soon. How soon? Uh, well, I'll let you know in a moment. And Biden says he's not considering $50,000 in student loan forgiveness. Take a look at this video clip explaining more. Big news, if you're one of the 40 plus million Americans who still has student loan debt, President Biden today hinting that you might be getting a break soon. Watch. I am considering dealing with some debt reduction. I am not considering $50,000 debt reduction, but I'm in the process of taking a hard look at whether or not there are going to, there will be additional debt forgiveness. A freeze on student loan payments went into effect at the start of the pandemic. It was recently extended by the White House for the seventh time, meaning that people don't have to start paying back those loans till August again. Chances are you or somebody you would know would benefit if in fact, the president did forgive some student loan debt. At least one in every eight Americans, one in every eight people you know has some kind of debt from college, totaling more than $1.7 trillion. The president has the executive authority to forgive any amount of debt, but Republicans are planning a bill to block him from doing that. Experts say any action on loan debt would also face some legal challenges. It is a politically interesting discussion to have, Sahil Kapoor, our NBC News senior national political reporter who's joining us now, um, because... You, you have those on the left who have suggested 50,000 or up, right? President Biden is seeming to say, well, it's not going to be 50, but there will be potentially some amount. When are we going to know specifics and, and how would this work? That's right, Hallie. Some significant news coming for young Americans saddled with student debt. President Biden saying in the strongest terms he has so far that he is uh, taking a hard look at using his executive authority to forgive some portion of student debt. Now, as you noted, he's not going to forgive 50000 It's going to be less than that. And a source familiar with the president's thinking told me that any action that President Biden takes will likely be linked to income. In other words, he's not going to uh, give people of means uh, relief when they have the ability to right. pay off 
these loans. Now, as for a time frame, he said a couple of weeks. Unclear if that actually means a couple of weeks or maybe a little, you know, a couple of weeks in uh, Trump's standard time. You'll know what I'm talking about here. Uh, this has already sparked the predictable debate on Capitol Hill with Democrats cheering on this effort and Republicans saying, no, 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 hit the brakes. This is a bad idea. Senator Mitt Romney suggested this was a political move. He said desperate polls call for desperate measures. Let's put his tweet up on the screen here. He said, uh, what he called it a bribe. He said, what comes next for giving auto loans, credit card debt, for giving mortgages, pay for it all with a wealth tax on the super rich? What could possibly go wrong? Senator Bernie Sanders, one of the most outspoken proponents of forgiving student debt, came back and said, Mr. Romney supports bribes in the form of tax cuts for the wealthy and billions in welfare for corporations, but is shocked by the idea that working Americans might get help paying off student debt. I know he thinks corporations are people, but does he know people are people, unquote. And uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski, the uh, moderate Republican from Alaska, said this is an idea worth looking at, but she does worry that if student debt is forgiven for this generation, what happens with the next generation in another 10 years, you know, who uh, will have to pay off these loans? She wants a long-term solution to yeah. lower the cost of college tuition. And finally, Hallie, this comes just about six months before a major midterm election where young voters are relatively disengaged. They are unhappy with what they perceive as a lack of progress from President Biden and this Democratic trifecta on issues important to them. This is perceived as one way the president can show those young voters that he is fighting for them, remind them why they support Democrats, and try to mobilize them so Democrats have some shot at keeping the House and the Senate. Hallie? White House Press Secretary, just while we've been on the air, Sahil, confirming, of course, that the president is considering this and also confirming something you mentioned, was, which is this is likely to not be a universal benefit. In other words, millionaires and billionaires, in Saki's words, uh, would be unlikely to receive this benefit. Sahil Kapoor, thank you very much. So what are your thoughts on that? Let me know down in the comments below. Thousands of dollars in student loan forgiveness. Is this a good idea, bad idea? He promised it. Is he going to fulfill it? Now, in terms of timing, you heard a little bit of the timing there. Probably if it were to happen, it would happen right around midterm elections in November because that's where they would get the most political bang for their buck. Uh, if they do it now, they may not get the votes in November, but I don't know. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, then, huge California budget surplus means residents could receive two hundred dollar rebate checks under new Senate plan. So this is this just came out yesterday, April twenty eighth. Uh, so this is a whole new thing besides the four hundred dollar uh, car checks. So like for every vehicle you have, you could potentially get four hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars max. This is something totally different. So millions of Californians would get two hundred dollar rebate checks under a plan by state senators who say they expect the state's extra spending power to reach sixty eight billion. So this would be on top of that four to eight hundred dollar stimulus check, basically because of how much more money uh, California is making. Their surplus is so high, meaning that whatever their budget is, they're getting over twenty nine billion dollars over that budget. So it's pretty crazy how much uh, the money they're getting. Maybe they should charge less taxes uh, so people who live there aren't struggling as much, but I don't know. Uh, let me know your thoughts on all that. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, I'm going to give you the five positive tips to make you start your day and make you be positive and grateful as much as you can. So first, Stay happy, stay strong, and have good vibes, and do great to others when they do great to you. And also, you know this one, be, ni be nice to others when you be nice to them. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your support. Don't forget, I'm announcing the $200 check winners later on, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're watching this before that time, you still have some time to enter. I have details of how you could do so down in the description below. So don't forget, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, Friday, I will pick the winners for those $200 checks. And if you want to check out my latest pickleball video, you could click up here and I'll see you in the next video video. Take care. Be safe. Thank you for watching.